Welcome to another episode of the Rocks of Utah. In this episode, we're exploring some of Utah's oldest sedimentary rocks, the fabulous Uinta Mountain Group, a massively thick layer of rock found in the core of Utah's highest mountain range, the Uinta Mountains. This rock layer is around 7,000 meters or seven kilometers thick and divided into six separate formations. A 766 million year old date comes from the Outlaw Trail Formation, while the top, Red Pine Shale, is correlated to units dating at 742 million years ago. So we're looking at around 30 million years of sedimentation. This was a mysterious period of Earth's history, a time we're just starting to better understand. The early supercontinent of Rodinia was breaking apart, forming what would later become the continents that we recognize today. But to the east was the high Greenville Highlands that dumped sediment down rivers across the craton of eastern Laurentia, flowing into an ocean to the west. These rivers formed the layers of rocks of these massive cliffs that now line the walls of the Flaming Gorge. These ancient rivers flowed across an alien landscape of no plants, no animals, no roots, or even lichen-encrusted stones. The only life on Earth was single-celled organisms, small, tiny fossils found in the shales of the Uinta Mountain Group. The period of time was called the Precambrian, as skeletonized multicellular life was absent, a period now referred to as the Neoproterozoic or the new early life. This large layer of rocks predates the great glacial period called the Crygean, which starts with the Sertian glaciation around 725 million years ago. This great glaciation resulted in the deep freezing of the entire planet into what has been called the snowball earth. Although the sediments along the cliffs of the Flaming Gorge represent flowing, braided rivers full of sediments tumbling in ancient, lifeless landscape, no one has found evidence of glacial deposits, although the highlands to the east were likely ice-capped, as the sediment here is coarse-grained and closely resembled a uplifted region. It's remarkable that sedimentary rock this age exists here in Utah. So here's a wonderful normal fault that we can see in the Uinta Mountain Group. We can see this one bed coming across and then dipping down and then we have this one back here. And what's, this is an extensional fault. Look. So this is extending and this, is, this block is dropping down into this area. <laughs> and so that's a, an amazing fault right here in the Uinta Mountain Group. Now I wonder if you're wondering if there are actually older rocks than the Uinta Mountain group. And there are. And we're gonna go look at some very old rocks here in Utah. We're here in, uh, in Red Creek Canyon. And we're gonna look at the Red Creek Quartzite and uh, take a look at some of the oldest rocks. Now these, these rocks are a little cooked. They were buried quite a bit deeper than any of the other rocks, rock layers that we've looked at so far. And so, as such, they are actually a metamorphic rock. So, when these rocks were buried at depth, they began to melt and certain new minerals started to form sort of erases all the fossil record, if there was a fossil record in these very ancient rocks. And uh, we're gonna take a look at them and see what, what they look like.
This rocks here is the uh, the Red Creek Quartzite. Now these look a bit different than the rocks that we've looked at thus far um, and that's because these are a metamorphic rock. This used to be a sandstone, a very ancient sandstone, and it was buried so deep in the ground and it was subjected to so much heat that the individual sand grains that compose the sandstone begin to melt and they form a single crystalline rock called quartzite. Now quartzite is a very hard, very durable rock. It does not easily weather and so uh, it's got a hardness of 7 on Mohs scale, so very hard uh, metamorphic rock. And the sad thing about quartzites is that they've been melted and crystallized to the point where they no longer preserve any fossils. So if there were any microscopic fossils in this quartzite, they're probably long gone, being destroyed by the intense heat and the intense pressure of being buried deep in the earth. These are very old, some of Utah's oldest rocks, but they are metamorphic rocks, which means that they have been changed chemically. So let's look at some other um, rocks that we're finding here. We're finding some schist. Now schist is a type of metamorphic rock, and it's what happens when you take a mudstone or a siltstone and you begin to bury it at depths. In a mudstone or claystone, finer grain, um, sedimentary rocks, what ends up happening is that you start to form micas, so uh, biotite and muscovite. In this schist we have a lot of uh, muscovite. We also see this mineral that's in here that we're looking for some really nice crystals of, and that is starolite. We also will find some garnets they'll start to form. Now all of these minerals form only at deep depths and indicate that these rocks were deeply, deeply buried in Earth's interior for these changes to occur. So let's see if we can find some nice crystals of starlight, guys. Oh, nice. So look at this rock here, guys. It's got uh, wonderful layers. So you can oh, see these are the yeah. ancient bedding planes of the rocks. You can see how the quartz, which would have been the sand, um, has completely melted. So these are crystals coming across here. But you can also see that the schist, the sparkly stuff with all the mica in it, is probably more of a finer grain mudstone that gives us this sparkling crystallized rock. So totally baked, but still preserving some of those original beds. So this is Jesse Ewan's grave, right here. He got a formation named after him in the Uinta Mountain Group. And uh, he was a prospector, and he lived about three miles north of here at the head of Jesse Ewan Canyon. Jesse arrived in Browns Park in 1867. He was ambushed by Frank Duncan in a dispute over affections of Madame Forestrell. Buried here by John Jarvie and Albert Speck Williams. And then he's right next to Robinson. Staked a mining claim too close to Jesse Ewan's property. Jesse claims self-defense in stabbing that resulted in Robinson's death. So Jesse Ewan killed Robinson. And then Robinson was killed by Frank Duncan. And they're both buried here. Apricots. I can throw a wide one. I can oh. try to get you. This is pretty gross. I'm so gross. All right, guys. I don't think we're going to be able to get one. That's probably why they're still Yeah, left this is there. pretty gross. Um, yeah, we're trying to get apricots in. I got apricot gooeys on me. Oh, gross.